all six JavaScript scopes explained with a couple of examples. Devs, welcome back. Pull up a chair, it's circle time. It's time to learn. If you're new here, I'm Derek. I'm a front end developer based out of Los Angeles, California. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over scope. Whoa! Get out of my gang! No, no, not that scope, but JavaScript scope. So let's get into it. So what is scope? I mean, that's that's the first question we really gotta ask is what scope even is. In JavaScript and pretty much every other programming language out there, your code runs within some sort of set scope. This scope determines what variables your code has access to and how new variables will interact with the rest of your code. In JavaScript, there are six types of scope. You've got global, module, block, function, lexical, and closure. The best way to think about scope is like a partition. A partition to help you separate different parts of your code from one another. That's pretty much it. I touch on this in greater depth, specifically with variables in this video. So feel free to check that out also, but let's hop in. All right, first up is global scope. Global scope is the outermost scope in JavaScript. It's accessible from any part of the script or program. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so global scope. We have const person's name here equals John. And then we have our say hi function here, which is basically just gonna log John's name to the console plus hello. So hello, John. We're then gonna call or invoke that function here on line seven. But before we do that, let's actually bring in our console and then we'll call say hi here. And of course we get hello, John. So a person's name is in the global scope. That's it, it's global, global as hell. Anything can access it from anywhere. So that's global scope. All right, module scope. This one, this one can be a little tricky. In JavaScript, module scope refers to the scope of variables, functions, and other declarations within a module. We're about to look at two. A module is a reusable piece of code that encapsulates related functionality and can actually be imported into other modules. Let's take a look at some examples here in our editor. Okay, so module scope. In this example, we have the variable greeting, which is declared here in greeting.js, making this greeting variable a module level variable. Greeting is accessible only from within this module, greeting.js. It is not accessible outside of it or anywhere else. Any attempt to access greeting from outside this module will result in a reference error and obviously we don't want that. And then here we have the function greet, which takes in a name and is simply just going to return the greeting from our greeting variable plus the person's name that you pass in when you call or invoke this function. And then here on line seven, we simply export it. Now let's bring up our second module and this one's called app.js. In app.js, the function greet is then imported or brought in for use. So we declare it in this module, export it, and then from within app.js, our second module, we're gonna bring it in to use it. And then we're gonna call or invoke that greet function here, pass in name, which is John, and then store it in the variable message. Now let's bring in our console and let's log message to the console and see what we get. So we get hello John, that's expected. So in the greeting.js module, greeting is defined but not exported. Therefore, other modules like app.js cannot directly access the greeting variable. It is confined to just the greeting.js module. Only the greet function here is exported and thus accessible from app.js, which is why we can call it here, pass it a value, log it to the console, and then get our result. So by controlling what is exported, you can encapsulate functionality within modules and expose only the necessary parts to other modules. In JavaScript, this is called the module pattern, and it just basically helps in maintaining a clean and organized code base. So this is module scope. All right, next up is block scope. Block scope is scope that is created inside of a block of code. So everything inside of curly braces. Examples of blocks would be a for loop or an if statement. Those are considered blocks. Variables declared inside of a block, specifically with the let or const keywords, are only available inside of the block where they are defined. Let's look at some code. Okay, so block scope. Here we have the function block scope example. Just has a simple if block in here, which is true by default. So anything inside of it will just run automatically. Setting the variable my string to a string, and then we're gonna log my string to the console. And then we're gonna try that again here. So let's bring in our console. And now we're going to call or invoke our block scope example function here. 
And yes, just as expected. So, so our console.log here on line five actually works because we're within the block scope of this block. Remember, if statements are blocks. So this code runs, but then when we try to access it here, which is outside of the scope of that block, that's when we get our reference error and my string is not defined because it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't have reference to this because it's outside of the scope of that block. So that's block scope. All right, function scope. Function scope is pretty simple. It's scope that is created inside of a function, not a block, but just a function. Variables declared inside a function are only accessible from within that function. They are not accessible outside of it. Take this example here. So like I said, function scope is pretty simple. We have a greet function here. We define the variable message, set it to hello world, and then we're gonna immediately log that to the console. So let's bring in our console. And then let's call or invoke our greet function to see what we get. So we're gonna get hello world. But now let's try to log a message to the console outside of the scope of this function. So I'll bring this guy in and we're gonna get that reference error. Message is not defined. It has no reference to it. It doesn't know what it is because again, we're outside of the scope of this function and it has no idea what it's trying to log to the console. So pretty simple, this is function scope. Okay, lexical scope. This one is a little interesting. Lexical scope in JavaScript is the scope or accessibility of a variable or function based on where it is defined in the actual code. So in other words, it's contextual position or location in the actual script. Is it at the top? Is it at the bottom? Is it in the middle? That's lexical scope. So let's look at an example. Okay, lexical scope. So here we have outer function. And inside of outer function, we have an inner function. We have a few console.logs occurring here and two variables declared. Outer variable is declared at the top level of outer function's scope. And in inner function, inner function also has inner variable. So this guy is outside and this guy is inside. So inner function is declared here and then immediately invoked. And then we try to do the same thing again. We try to log those two to the console again here at the very end. So now let's call or invoke outer function and see what we get in the console. Okay, so it looks like the first three run, but the fourth and final one here on line 12, it's not defined, it doesn't have access to it, can't can't do shit. So why is that? So from inner function, we try to log outer and inner variable to the console, which we do successfully because it has reference to inner variable because it's within its own local scope of this function. And outer variable also runs successfully because we have access to outer variable, which is outside of the scope of that function. Because remember, variables declared in a function are only accessible within that function and any nested functions inside of it. But after inner function is invoked or called here, this code runs. This is still within the function scope of this entire function. So line 11 runs successfully as well. But then when we get to this last line, line 12, we try to log inner variable one more time to the console, but it failed. And that's because trying to log inner variable to the console outside of inner function causes this error because inner variable here is not within the lexical scope of our outer function, if that makes sense. So it doesn't have reference to this because this code was called here and already ran. This code has already been executed. So it doesn't know what this is. Because remember in JavaScript, things are read from top to bottom, line by line. So in situations like this, we will get an error because of lexical scope and where this code is in the actual script contextually. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, closure scope. In JavaScript, a closure is a feature where an inner function has access to the outer functions variables. So we're talking about nested functions here. A closure allows the inner function to access and manipulate variables that are external to its own scope. Closures are created every time a function is created. The key aspect of a closure is that the inner function retains access to the variables of the outer function even after the outer function has finished executing. So for example, okay, closure scope. So here in this example, we have outer function, which contains an inner function. Outer function has a variable called outer var, which is I am outside. And it of course defines that inner function here, which is gonna log outer var to the console. And then finally here at the end, we're just going to return inner function. That's all this guy is gonna do. We then call or invoke outer function here. And then we're gonna immediately assign whatever it returns to closure example, and then log closure example to the console. So let's bring in our console and let's run this code. 
and we get I am outside. So a closure is created when a function, or in this case, inner function, is able to remember and access its lexical scope even when it is executed outside of the original scope. So here, inner function forms a closure over outer var because outer var is within its lexical scope when inner function is defined. And when closure example here is called, it executes the inner function that was returned here from outer function as a whole. So despite outer function having finished executing and its scope being technically gone, inner function still has access to outer var due to the closure. Therefore, inner function when returned successfully logs uh, I am outside to the console. So that's probably a little confusing. So basically after outer function has completed execution, inner function retains access to outer var because of the closure. This is what allows inner function here to sort of remember and access outer var when closure example here is called. But basically in summary, closures allow a function to quote unquote, remember the environment in which it was created. Like in this example, inner function here retains access to outer var through the closure, enabling it to log outer var to the console, even after outer function here has finished executing as a whole. Hopefully that makes sense. Well devs, that's about it for JavaScript scope. Understanding these scopes is crucial for managing the visibility and lifecycle of variables in JavaScript avoiding bugs, and basically just writing clean and efficient code. So if you enjoyed this or you got some value out of this, definitely click event that like button. If you're feeling chatty, feel free to leave a comment. But as always, if you wanna support the channel, all you have to do is...